I am vexed. Vexed. Once again, my point about this fan base being the biggest issue at this football club is being proven. And it was proven again last night. Yeah. Too many Arsenal fans are caught in their feelings about other people's opinions. Right? And while we're all sat here, bickering, arguing, yeah, calling each other bullshit and names over Twitter, Facebook, whatever platform it may be, over whether we're our tether in or our tether out, this twat, or these two twats, this twat, and this twat, are all getting a free pass. Once again. Because we as a fan base are too interested in, oh, we've won a couple of games. Oh, where's the Mikel Arteta out people now? Yeah, or vice versa. Oh, we've lost a few games. See, told you so. When we are 19 days into a January transfer window and we have not brought one single first team fucking player. To remind everybody, Arsenal Football Club, Arsenal Football Club, one of the biggest football clubs in world football. Sat tenth, tenth we are nineteen league games into the season, and we are sat tenth. Now I don't give a fuck if you're our tetter in or our tetter out. Is that acceptable at Arsenal Football Club? Hmm? Because there's one thing that we could all agree on. This season has not been good enough. I don't care if you blame the players or if you blame the manager. The reality is the minimum, the minimum expectation as an Arsenal fan should be Champions League football. We have nearly been out of it for five years. That is the minimum expectation. Every Arsenal fan on the planet should want to challenge for league titles. But in order to do that, we need to improve our squad. We're in a January transfer window. Why are we not buying players? This isn't a joke. We're sat 10th. Tenth. And like I said, too many fans caught in their feelings. Oh, look, we've won a few games. Mikel Arteta is the greatest. Oh, look, we've lost a few games. See, I told you he was shit. This is no longer a debate about Mikel Arteta in, Mikel Arteta out. We as a fan base should be collectively on Stan and Josh Kroenke's ass right now. But we're not. Because we're an embarrassment. 
And that goes for each and every single person. Forget about people's opinions. Yeah. My opinion is I want Mikel Arteta out. And that isn't based off the fact that we've had a poor run of form as such. That is based off the fact that I do not think the guy is good enough to take us to top four, even if he got players in. I do not think the guy is good enough to win the league with Arsenal. Yeah, the minimum expectation, Champions League football. The overall expectation as a fan to win the league. And look, I don't have a problem with people who are Mikel Arteta in. Yeah, a gal is Mikel Arteta in. I go on his streams on a regular. I can respect your opinion. Uh, yeah, I can respect your opinion. I don't care. You know, you have some of the fan base that think he's good enough, and that's fair enough. And then you have the other half of the fan base who don't think he's good enough. But stop fucking bickering. And let's do something about this twat, this parasite who is in charge of our football club. All the time, it's excuse after excuse after excuse. And I am fed up and sick and tired of hearing excuses. Bullshit excuses. Um, bullshit excuses. Oh, we can't do anything in January. We're in a pandemic. How many times have we heard that? This isn't the first January transfer window where we haven't signed anybody. This has gone on for years. Yeah. So if this pandemic carries on into the summer, then and then Arsenal come out and say, "Oh, do you know what? We can't spend money in in the summer." Because we've just been through a pandemic. Are you going to accept it then? Yes, it is brilliant that we have got rid of Mr. Fucking Missing and got him off the wage book. It is brilliant that we are going to probably get rid of Socrates within the next few days and get him off the wage book. Yeah? It's brilliant that we've sent Kalasinac out on loan. And got rid of his wages on the wage book. But the reality of it is, we are 10th in the fucking league. We need reinforcements. Now. Because I'm telling you now, right? Our next five fixtures. Southampton away. Man United at home. Wolves away. Aston Villa away. Leeds at home. We might be sat 10th now. And you might well have these fans that say... Oh, well, look, we're only two points away from Chelsea. But after them five fixtures, we could quite easily be back in the relegation zone or in and around the relegation dogfight again. It's time these fans stopped getting in their feelings and started putting pressure on this board because this is a fucking joke. Mikel Arteta, not long ago, came out and he said what we wanted to do in January, what we wanted to do in the summer. The plan is done. So where's this plan then, Mikel? Is the plan just to get rid of players? Yeah? Is that what it is? Tell us. Tell us, because I'm fed up with it. We get linked to every single player under the sun and we never, ever go and get them. We have a big, big issue in our midfield, especially. Go and address it. This season, this season has been shit. Not just for Arsenal. For every single team in the Premier League. Every single team in the Premier League has dropped points. 
if we invest properly in the January transfer window, there is no reason why we could not get into the top six as a bare minimum. Maybe even scrape top four. And that is purely and simply down to the fact that everybody has been shit. Nobody's had consistency. But we as fans are too bothered about bickering about Mikel Arteta in, Mikel Arteta out. And I'm fucking had enough of it. If you're Mikel Arteta in, good luck to you. Yeah, I, I respect your opinion. Yeah. But it is just your opinion. Just like us, the Mikel Arteta out people. It is our opinion. That is all it is. We've just won four games out of our last five and kept clean sheets in every single one of them. And I'll praise Mikel Arteta for that. I'll praise him for turning it around when he looked like he was dead and buried. Do I think he's good enough still? No. But it is my opinion. Yeah. Just like the Arsenal fans who are Mikel Arteta in, who, when we was going on that losing run, were pressured to beat Mikel Arteta out. Even though we was on a losing run, do you still think he's good enough for Arsenal? Yes, I do. Well, that's your opinion, whatever. Put opinions to one side on Mikel Arteta. Let's join and unite as a fan base and realise that this is not good enough. I don't give a fuck about who the manager is. We're in a January transfer window. We need players right now. And it is time for Arsenal fans to wake up. Stan Kroenke, Josh Kroenke. Get on them. Edu, get on him. Finai, get on him. Because not all of this is Mikel Arteta's fault. They have to take a blame as well. And at the moment, they're getting free passes. Remember this. Be excited. Yeah? Are we excited, Arsenal fans? No. I'm going to get into a couple of your comments because I don't like ranting too much. I don't normally do this, but this fan base is just pissing me right off. Yeah? It is the reason why we are where we are. Because we accept bollocks. Whether that be from a manager or whether that be from the board. It is bollocks. <clears throat> Sam here says, joke of a fan base. Um, I swear this fan base is killing me, Brandon. Yeah, uh, tell me about it, man. Yeah, I've, I've been at work all day. I've had a little time to think over this and I'm just, I'm getting fucking fed up with it. Um, relentless fan base needs to get in the bin. Um, Daling says, are you okay, Brandon? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I just, I needed to get that off my chest, you know, because this is bullshit. Uh, when are people going to wake up and realise that this isn't acceptable? I don't care if you're Mikel Arteta in or Mikel Arteta out. Right now, that shouldn't even be the conversation. Yeah, because whether we like it or whether we don't, Mikel Arteta is the manager of the football club and he's going to continue to be the manager of the football club because the board have told us that he is going to continue to be the manager of Arsenal Football Club. We're in the middle of a January transfer window. We should be going after players and instead we're sitting back going, oh, it's all right, we got rid of Mr. Missing. Oh, yeah, yeah, brilliant window. Even though as we all know full well, Granite Xhaka is not good enough. Yeah, he had a good performance last night and I'll praise the geezer for it. But he lets down manager after manager after manager. 
Same for Hector Bellerin. You know, we have players in this football club still that are not good enough. And a massive issue in our midfield. Yeah? Don't think just because we've won a few games that things have all, all of a sudden we've turned a corner because we haven't. If after the next five games, yeah, we go on and we win, say, three out of five of them and get a draw in one, then I'll say, OK, fair enough, we turn the corner. And I've said it before, if Mikel Arteta gets us in the top four, I will say, sorry, guys, I was wrong. I was wrong. But right now, everything that's going on is just proving me right. I'm not. Uh, I'm not surprised we have a bad owner. Hundred percent. Um, well, Brandon is fuming. Yeah, I am, mate. I am fucking. I just, uh, like I say, I had to get it off my chest. Um, this is just. We are playing better now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and look, like I said, we're playing better now. Um. Whether Mikel Arteta was lucky in in the fact that he managed to shoehorn uh, Smith Rowe into the team or not, right? He's consistently played him since. He's consistently picked the correct team for the last five games, right? I was happy with the lineup last night. I was happy with the team last night. You know, the only person I was a bit fuming with was a Bamiyan, and that's because I personally thought that he should be dropped. But then. He showed you again last night why he shouldn't be dropped. Yeah, because it look, first half, he was Pierre Emerick Sonogo. There's no question about that. Yeah. Bottling every single chance. But the two opportunities that he did get in the second half, he put them away. So I can't say no more on the geezer. Yeah? You we want him to score goals. He scored goals. The board out. Yeah, I agree 100%. And you know what? What's so annoying about this is Turkish is probably the only Arsenal fan saying all of what I just said right now. The rest of them, like I said, they're too busy bickering. Mikel Arteta in, Mikel Arteta out. Oh, it's an agenda. Brandon on fire is 100% correct. Thank you very much, Diego. You know, a, a fan that agrees with me. Thank You know, there are fans out there, it seems, that does agree that we shouldn't really be focusing on Mikel Arteta in, Mikel Arteta out. We should be focusing on the fact that we're in a January transfer window and we need players. And we've not got any. Man like Brandon, tell him, mate. Thank you for your comment, uh, Eunice. Um, the other clubs are in the pandemic as well. 100%. You know, 100%. We are the only football team, possibly, that I've really heard use this pandemic as a fucking excuse. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we've had a poor start to the season because Mikel didn't get that much time with the players because of the pandemic. We can't spend money on Thomas Party and Awa because of the pandemic. It's bollocks. It's all bullshit. You know, Manchester United finished last season later than what Arsenal did. Yeah, they had a shorter pre-season yeah then what Arsenal did they're sat top of the fucking Premier League Chelsea will sack Lampard um, I think if they lose tonight then they, yeah I think he will be gone but that's because Chelsea are a big club they act like a big club we act like a small club and a lot of the time that's down to the fan base 
when we lose those five games, I want to see those Bellerin for captain lovers, Xhaka is great, William lovers and Ozil, idiot, non-Arsenal fans. <laughs> it can happen though, you know. No, Nobody can tell me that we're going to go on and win the next five games. Because Arsenal are a yo-yo team. We can we can go on a little bit of a run, win three or four or five games, yeah? And then we can turn into an absolute shambles within the click of a finger. That is what we are. And it would not surprise me if we lost every single one of them next five games. This fan base should stop accepting mediocrity, 100%. Um, I agree with you there. Uh, thank you for your comment, Solomon. Um, Taib says, big up Brandon. Big up Taib. Um, <laughs> mate, I'm fucking angry. And as you can probably see by my pinned comment, uh, I've put smash the likes up. All the dislikes, I don't really care, you know. If people are... If people are going to be that caught in their feelings about how I feel about something, you know, that's that's what social media has done to the world. It's a joke. Um, big up, big up, Jahid. Arsenal should be competing for the league title, hundred percent. And the funny thing is, right, we moved into the Emirates Stadium. And when we moved into the Emirates Stadium in 2006, yeah, so this is nearly 15 years ago now, we was told we was going to compete for the biggest honours in the game with the biggest teams in the world. Since then, we have competed for the league title once. Once. And fans of Arsenal can talk about the season. Oh, we should have won it when Leicester won the league. We finished 10 points behind them. Yeah. We might have been there. In and around, you know, first, second, third. For the majority of the season. But we didn't compete for that title because we finished 10 points behind. So the last time we finished, the last time we actually competed for a league title was in 07, 08, when we finished four points behind Manchester United. That is competing for a league title. That was 13, 14 years ago. And ever since, we've been, trust the process. Whether that be under Arsene Wenger, Unai Emery, Mikel Arteta. How much longer are we going to sit back, accept bullshit, before we go, hmm, hang on, we haven't competed for a title for oh, God knows how long. Edu and Vinay out. Yep, yeah, I agree, 100%. And do you know what, right? The two guys, Edu, Vinay, even Mikel Arteta to an extent, yeah? I don't blame these guys as such. I blame them because they're shit. But I don't blame them as such because who employed them? Who put them in charge of Arsenal Football Club? When really and truly, effectively, what we've got is we've got three people in charge of the footballing side of Arsenal Football Club in Vinay, Edu and Mikel Arteta, who had no experience in the job that they do previous to when they brought uh, when they joined Arsenal so the real question is who put these geezers in charge in the first place but again rather than the fan base looking at it like that they just go it's all right it's okay Mikel Arteta he's great he worked with Pep Guardiola when really and truly yeah, it doesn't matter whether the guy worked with Pep Guardiola or not. Right? It doesn't matter if Mikel Arteta goes on to win a league title for Arsenal. 
he should never have got the job in the first place because he doesn't have the experience. Same for Edu, same for Vinay. His fan base is a bunch of wank. Yeah, I agree, mate. Um, thanks for your comment. Zidane28 says, big up, mate. I saw you on Lee's channel. Big up to you, my guy. Um, thank you for the support. Thank you for the comment. And, yeah, yeah hopefully we'll uh, link up with Lee again soon. You know, I quite enjoyed that. Um, owner needs to fuck off, lowering expectations, bringing inexperienced people in to save money. 100% agree with you, AFC04. Nice to see you in the comments as well. You're always here. Big up to you. Uh, Brandon, are you done with Pepe? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And this is, again, another sign of mismanagement at board level. You went and spent £72 million on a player who isn't really worth £40 to £45 million. Pound. Yeah, at best. There's no doubt in the guy's got talent, but we don't see it enough from him. And at this precise moment, he should feel embarrassed because he's being kept out of this Arsenal side by a kid. But Kai Osaka is still a kid, but he's levels, levels above what Pepe can offer us. So, yeah, I am done with Pepe. I do think we should sell him in the summer. If we are this football club, that is so broke, so, oh, we can't sign anybody until we get rid of people, even though we have a fucking billionaire sitting on the board, even though we're one of the biggest football clubs in world football, then Nicolas Pepe should be the first one out of the door because he's the first player that we could probably get a decent amount of money back for and invest it in the squad elsewhere. Because he's not been good enough. Simple as. Big up. Big up to you, Alexis. Jeez, where are we? Got lots of comments tonight. Um, thank you for tuning in, all of you. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, Suleiman says, let's have a stream tonight, bro. Um, let's talk about this. I'll tell you what I'll do, mate, right? Um, I can't do tonight because... I, I, I'm busy tonight. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm up to because, uh, yeah, secrets. Um, but let me think. We haven't got Southampton till Tuesday, I think. Um, so I've got plenty of time over the next couple of days. What is it today? Tuesday. We'll call it. Send me, send me, um, send me a message on Twitter. And, um, I'll link up with you and we'll do a video on Thursday, if that's all right with you. Um, that's why I rate Turkish always looking at the bigger picture, 100%. Um, love Turkish. If you haven't already, yeah, I, I have got a video on my channel with Turkish. Um, it's a, it was a little while ago now. Um, but yeah, love talking to the guy, you know. Um, one of the most knowledgeable Arsenal fans out there, 100%. And um yeah, if you haven't seen it already, go and check that out. Um, Turkish and Mo are real Arsenal fans, 100%. Um, Mo as well, again, you know, I agree with a lot of his opinion. Um, to be fair, you know, um, apart from on AFTV, you don't really see much of Mo, you know. And uh, there you go. Backhander FC, 100%. Um, these fans have annoyed me badly, always accepting mediocrity. 100%. Afdaling, says Brandon Rant. Yeah, I'm probably going to get memes for that now. But there you go. Um, Relentless, how you doing, bro? Nice to see you in the chat as well. Um, kids are crying and Lee's losing sleep over Ozil. Fuck Ozil. Fuck Ozil. We're being real, right? The guy had two seasons that were you know, decent. And then he was good in moments, right? But he, he was the type of player who would probably go five, six games having, a, you know, dropping two out of tens. 
and then he'll have one game where he drops a seven, eight. Is that good enough for somebody who's paid 350 grand a week? No. And good luck to the guy, yeah? He's gone to Turkey. He'll probably kill it out there, all right? He probably will. He's got a massive following. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a good player for Arsenal. But, you know, did we really miss him? Not really. Um, will we miss him? Nah, not really. Because Emil Smith-Rowe has came into that number 10 role. And I can tell you now, he's looked miles better than Meza Ozil in the short space of period, uh, period of time that he's played. And that just tells you everything you need to know, really. Um, Brandon, can I become a mod? Um, I'm a mod on Lee Gunner. I would love to have mods on the chat as well. Um, I don't know how you do that, though. I've got to be honest. Um, I am sort of learning about this YouTube stuff as I go along. Um, like I say, I only started my channel about two months ago. Um, and before that, I've never done a YouTube video before. And um, I've got to be honest, I have no idea how to do that. So if you know how to do that, let me know in the chat and I'll get it sorted. No problem. Um, and pay people say it's a process and we need to be patient. Exactly. We've been patient 14 years. How many more years are we going to sit back and just be, oh, be patient, be patient, be patient. Before you know it, it's 30, 40 years later and we still haven't won a league title. After Ailing, Edu is a fraud. He gave William a three-year contract and 250 grand a week. 100%. 100%. Um, that guy, he needs his contract tearing up. I'm not even joking. The guy's come here for a payday, and that is it. You can tell in his body language, in the way that he plays. Yeah, even when he came onto the pitch yesterday, he didn't give a flying fuck. Yeah, he had one free kick, hit it straight at the wall. 250 grand a week. It's a joke. But nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about the fact that these guys behind the scenes, you know, forget about Mikel Arteta. These guys behind the scenes, these guys on board level have fucked up majorly by giving Willian that contract. Yeah, to, to, to a certain extent, they fucked up a little bit by giving a Bamiyan as much money as what he's on. I wouldn't have given him 375. I'd have given him, you know, maybe 300 maximum. But then we as a football club wonder why. We've got players that are bang average. Just coming here for money. <laughs> Pepe not even worth uh, 20 million yeah we got robbed on Pepe I agree with you um, Lil finessed us badly 100% um, we got absolutely finessed by that no no, no question about it Um Brandon, do you think we will beat Manchester United at the Emirates? To be honest with you, mate, this is it's a tough question. Right? It's a real tough question because Arsenal and Manchester United are very similar in certain ways. You know, Manchester United have been probably the most consistent team in the league this season. That's why they're sat top of the league, you know. Like us, they can also fall apart. The only difference being is they have a far better squad than us. Um, and with the confidence that they're on at the moment, um, depending on what happens in the, the Southampton game for us, you know, will probably really depend what happens in that Manchester United game. Um, we do normally tend to do very well against them at the Emirates, or we have done in recent seasons. 
So why not? Why not? Um, let's hope so. But, you know, again, the fans are going to get, you know, gassed. If we go and beat Manchester United, all of a sudden the January transfer window doesn't matter anymore. You know, Granite Xhaka has a great performance. All of a sudden it's Granite Iniesta. Yeah. Mikel Guardiola. Uh, where do you see the fans in a club structure? Um, well, at the end of the day, we are the customer. Basically, um, you know, and we should be the most important thing um, surrounding the football club, because without fans. Without fans, there is no football club, you know, we're seeing it now. Look how boring it is to watch football. With no fans in the stadium. Even players are saying it themselves. Cough, we miss the fans. We are what makes a football club. And if we're not happy, it's the same as it's the same as going to a shop, right? Let's say we go to a shop, we buy a packet of biscuits. This is a weird analogy, by the way. We buy a packet of biscuits. We walk out and we realise these packet of biscuits are out of date. So we go back to the shop, say, oh, mate, what's going on here? These are out of date. Yeah. Then at the shop, have to make sure that the customer is happy. And it is no different with a football club. Apart from if you're Arsenal, of course. Um, <laughs> Miss Paella Specco is costing us top four. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Rank, Santi, Fabregas, and Urzel in order. Um, oh, Jesus. Well, it's easy. Urzel's last. No question about that. And then you'd probably have to go. Santi'd be in the middle of that. Um, and then Fabregas. You know, Santi was such an important part of our midfield. Um, we didn't realise until he got injured um, how important he was. And Fabregas, well, Fabregas was just exceptional for us, you know. Um, Meza Ozil, you know, hit and miss, hit and miss. Um, almost a teenager and Ozil is massively overrated. The best player who I've seen in this position is David Silva, based on players who I watched. Yeah, David Silva, you know, quality player, absolute quality player. Um, you got Kevin De Bruyne in there as well, you know. Um, who else can you think of? Iniesta. Um, God, who else? There's loads. There's loads, you know. Bruno Fernandes is even better than Meza Ozil. Because he offers more in a game. It's just, it's just as simple as that, really. Um, I will never forget what Ozil did in the Europa League final when we lost 4-1. He walked off the pitch like a lazy clown. And there you go. That is these players. They don't care. A lot of them don't really care. A lot of them are here for a payday. You know, Granite Xhaka, I'd love to know what he earns in a, uh, a week. What, 140 grand? Do you think any other football club in the right mind would pay Granite Xhaka 140 grand? Heck, the Bellerin, 120 grand per week. Nobody's going to pay him that. But we do here at Arsenal because we're thick, stupid. You know, let people walk all over us, players especially, and the board. Um, take it easy with the Pepe slander. Listen, mate, I don't rate the guy. I really don't. Um, it's too one-footed. Um, all he wants to do all the time is cut inside. So whenever... You've got Pepe playing on the right and then you've got Hector Bellerin behind him. It looks horrendous because you've got Hector Bellerin who never overlaps. Yeah, he'll get halfway up the pitch and then he'll start paying, playing the ball backwards, sideways. Yeah, never really whips a, a crossing, right? And then you've got Pepe who never tries to make a run on the outside of the fullback and cross the ball in with his right foot. 
you know. It always wants to cut in on his left. And he's so predictable, it's ridiculous. Um, evening, guys. Good show. You talk so much sense, Rat Army. Big up the Rat Army. Um, I just, I just say how I feel, to be honest with you, you know. And uh, like I say, too many Arsenal fans caught in their feelings, you know. Um, but big up to you, Tony. Uh, thank you for the comment and thank you for watching. Um, Seren, or Seren, sorry. Um, if you were Arsenal manager, what signings would you make in this window? I said it on uh, Lee's channel. Um, if you haven't seen the video, obviously go and check that out. You know, um, I'd look at it like this. If we had the option of going and get Jack Grealish in the summer, yeah, then I'd forget about an, a, a central attacking midfielder for this window. But I would go and get Basuma straight off the bat. Yeah, someone who can play next to Thomas Party, someone who can do a bit more defensive work. Because I genuinely feel like Thomas Party has more to his game than just being a defensive midfielder. I think he could offer something going forward as well. You know? So I'd, I'd definitely go and get Basuma, 100%. I'd replace that fucking fashion model that we got at right back as well with Max Ahrens. Young kid. Yeah. Um, levels above Bellerin, 100%. Um, who else would I go and get? Um, and look, if we didn't have the option for Jack Grealish, I'd go and get Buendia. I would go and get Buendia. I don't think he's the greatest. Yeah, but he's still a young player. He wouldn't cost an arm and a leg. Right? Neither of them players would. Um, they wouldn't cost us an awful lot in wages either. And uh, he's better than what we've got, if we're being real. You know, and even if Buendia isn't um, in the starting eleven week in, week out, at least you know you've got a player there now who's going to push Emil Smith Rowe. To improve even further in his game. At the moment, we ain't got anybody else. We've got Emil Smith Rowe. That's it. If that if that kid gets injured, we're in trouble. And that's how bad it is at the moment. The fact that we're relying on a kid. And he is a kid. He's still learning. He will have poor games. He will have great games, but he will have poor games. You know? And He's become a bit of an integral part to this football team because without him in that midfield, we have no link between defence and attack. You see the difference since he's came in. And that's just how I see it. Um, I'm going to do a few more comments and then I'm going to have to wrap this up. Um Bid with Turkish was three weeks ago before the Brighton game. Great live stream. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, it was. That's right. It was the preview to the Brighton game. Um, like I say, go and check that out. Um, <laughs> Eliza, what's up, Brandon? What are we ranting about? You'll have to go back and watch the rest of the video, mate. I'm, I'm cheered up a little bit now. Um, it's nice to see all you guys um, commenting and watching. You know, I really do appreciate it. Um, but I just had to get it off my chest. Um, you know, I was just I was just talking about the fan base, the fan base as a whole in general, you know, not not pinpointing the Mikel Arteta out people or the Mikel Arteta in people, just the fan base as a whole, you know. Um, David Silva was a proper tidy footballer, way better than Ozil, 100%. Um, big up, big up Jamie. How you doing, bro? Um Relentless says Santi sacrificed his career for that bloke Ozil. Santi was a great player, very underrated, you know, um, very, very underrated. Um, technical ability was absolutely bang on, you know, left foot, right foot. It did not matter. Um, and the fact that we only, I think we only paid about £15 million for him was an absolute steal. Um, and it's just a shame that, you know, injuries just sort of, wreaked havoc in his career because I tell you what we could do with a Santi Cazorla right now um, 
Will says Pepe has had enough chances when you compare him to ESR or Saka and it's too predictable. We don't play on the counter quick enough to accommodate his playing style. 100%. I also think the guy needs more space than what he gets. You know, the easiest way to snuff Pepe out of the game is to put two players on him. You know, as soon as you've got two players in and around him, marking him, he can't get in the game, you know. Um, Iron Robin, yes. Iron Robin does it, um, but nobody can stop him. Pep, but Pepe tries to do it, but doesn't work. Only three times he scored his trademark goal. 100%. 100%. Um, but like I say, Iron Robin is levels, levels, or was levels above Nicolas Pepe. Um, Diego says, share the live stream. Also, if you're new, subscribe. Big up, Diego. Um, thank you for that. Solomon says, I'm so hyped that your channel is growing. Only realist are uh, Arsenal YouTubers, Lee Gunner, Turkish, yourself and Mo. We need more of you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. Like, um, like Diego says, of course, if you're watching and you haven't already, share this stream. Yeah, make sure it gets out to all the Arsenal fans. Yeah, make sure it gives them something to think about. Because really and truly, this isn't good enough. It's not good enough. Um, and of course, if you're new, subscribe. Go and hit that subscribe button right now. Um, big up to everybody. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back very soon. Solomon, send me a message on Twitter, bro. We will get this video arranged 100%. Um, but big up to everybody. And I'll see you in a bit.